Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome down to my prop shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm gonna give you a little bit of a primer on using airbrushes for finishing your props and costumes. Now, I did a video on airbrushes a couple of years ago. It's a little bit outdated, and if you're looking for a good chuckle and seeing how I did all this three years ago, then give it a look. But I figured I'd update you on the whole airbrush scene and what I'm into nowadays because I've gotten a whole bunch more airbrushes and I've learned a whole lot more. So, here you go. Airbrushes are great. You can use them to accomplish a whole bunch of different finishes that really aren't all that possible any other way. For example, I use some specialty airbrush only lacquers to get the chrome finish on Ray's blaster. You can also use an airbrush to get really nice soft gradients on your armor. I use this on my Diablo 3 Crusader armor to get those soft shadowy looks. I also really like using my airbrush to paint small models like Mr. Handy. It's just a really great tool to have around. If you're just getting started, then literally any airbrush you get is better than nothing. So I recommend you go out and buy the cheapo airbrush with a compressor and get started. The best thing you can do is just get good at using an airbrush. This is exactly what I did a couple of years ago. In fact, if you go to Harbor Freight and just pick up one of their little compressors and their cheapo kit, it'll do you just fine for a couple of years. In fact, I still have my cheapo airbrush. This little siphon-fed fella has been treating me really well for a couple of years. Sure, it's old, sure, it's kind of beat up, but it still spits out paint. There are, of course, a couple of different varieties of airbrush, depending on how you load your paint. There's gravity-fed airbrushes. These have a little hopper that you feed from the top. You can just drip your paint in that way and it will fall through via gravity as you spray it out. There are also siphon-fed airbrushes. These feed from the bottom with a little hose and as you spray air through it, it siphons paint up through that little hose and sprays the paint out the front. There isn't one that's better than the other one. They're both pretty good depending on what you need them for. I wouldn't be too picky about it. First one I got was a siphon-fed. I have one of each or a couple of each and I use them for a variety of different purposes. As you get into airbrushes, you'll start to get a little bit more picky about the different varieties out there. For example, you can get ones with different sized nozzles. Also note that there are sometimes different sized hoses and fittings for your airbrush. So note the connection threads on your airbrush that you buy and the hose that you buy to go with it. Make sure that they match. For example, my Iwata airbrushes and my cheapo airbrush do not match so I need to have different sized hoses and fittings for each one. You'll also need an air compressor. This is to blast air through your brush and spray that paint out. If you already have a shop compressor like I've got for my air tools then you can just use that. It'll work just fine. But if you really want to get into the airbrush thing then you can buy an airbrush specific compressor. These are nice because they're smaller and more compact. They're much much quieter than a shop compressor. And mine, for example, has a little holder for my airbrush. This is a very basic compressor, but it treats me pretty well. Of course, you can run the gamut of expensive and crazy compressors. But again, if you're just getting started, something like this will treat you well for a long time. All right, now that we've got our equipment, let's get to painting. Okay, so you've got your airbrush, you're ready to go. You need some paint. I tend to use acrylic model paints for most of the airbrushing that I do. Unless otherwise specified, then these usually need to be thinned down a little bit so that you can run it through your airbrush. What you're looking for is a consistency similar to milk. Most normal acrylic paints can just be thinned with a little bit of water. You just dab in a little bit of water and then you mix it up a little bit until you get it to the right consistency. I've even got a little electronic mixing tool, not necessary, but it was cheap and it's neat. Some other paints, like I mentioned, don't need to be thinned. If it says so on the bottle, then you're good to go. You can just pour it right in your airbrush. This includes some acrylic paints like the stuff from Createx or some of those specialty lacquers. All you have to do is shake up the bottle a little bit, pour it in your airbrush and you're good to go. With your paint ready, all you gotta do is connect your airbrush to your air compressor via the hose, turn on the air compressor, set your PSI, usually around 20 is pretty good, but you may need to fill it with it a little bit to get it to work right, and then you can just start spraying. All you gotta do, push the button on the airbrush and it'll start spitting out paint. Now, of course, if it's a single action airbrush, like my crazy old one, then you do just have to push the button. That's the single action and it'll start spitting out paint. This guy is really easy to use. If you want to control how much paint comes out, you can fiddle with the nozzle a little bit, just screw it in or screw it out a tiny bit and it will put out more or less paint. 
You can also control how sharp the lines are that you're spraying by moving your airbrush closer or further away from the piece you're painting. Now, if you've got a Fancy Pants dual action airbrush, when you push that button down, all it does is spray out air. Then as you pull the button backwards, it'll slowly let out more and more paint. This gives you even more control on a moment by moment basis as you're painting your parts. Again, the more practice you have on this, the better. This can be a highly technical, skilled operation. And of course, the airbrush that you're using, the paints that you're using, and the techniques that you're utilizing will all make a big difference in the final outcome. So of course, you owe it to yourself to experiment a lot. Really get to know your airbrush and know what you can accomplish with it. Also note that if the paint is sputtering as it comes out, you may need to adjust the PSI, you may need to adjust the nozzle a little bit, and also you may need to clean your airbrush. Speaking of cleaning your airbrush, whenever you finish with it, you should clean it. If you let paint dry in the airbrush, it will gum up all the works and it will not operate the next time you want to use it. Cleaning it only takes a couple of minutes. You just take most of the pieces apart by hand and then you can remove any excess paint that is in there. I like using things like paper towels, tiny little brushes, Q-tips and small pipe cleaners. I also like using solvents like rubbing alcohol and maybe some lacquer thinner. Using all of those tools and some of your thinners, you can go in and wipe away all of the excess paint. I also like to run a little bit of that rubbing alcohol through the airbrush to make sure anything that's left lingering around will get blasted out. Now, if you do leave your airbrush around with paint in it and it gets all dried up, it's not the end of the world. You can utilize an ultrasonic cleaner. These things aren't terribly expensive and they're usually used to clean jewelry. All you have to do is take apart all of your little airbrush parts, place them in a little basket, place that little basket into the ultrasonic cleaner, fill that ultrasonic cleaner with some household cleaning solvent, then set the timer and hit go. This will vibrate the pieces in there and send that solvent all the way through all your parts and it will vibrate away dried up pieces of paint and all of the mechanical parts on the inside of your airbrush that are hard to get to. Once it's done with its cycle, you can see how it worked. And if you need to, you can just run it again or take it out, rinse it off with a little bit of water, then dry and assemble your fully clean, shiny airbrush. Now you're ready do some airbrushing. Hopefully this video has given you the confidence to try airbrushing for yourself and you run out and buy one tomorrow. If you want to know what airbrushes and airbrush tools I use, I'll have links to those all down in the description. Those are Amazon links and if you use those, that helps out our channel a whole bunch. If you've got any questions about using an airbrush, please let me know in the comments down below and I will answer those to the best of my ability. I usually monitor comments on new videos for about a week or so and I try and get back to everyone the best that I can. Oh, and hey, real quick note, I'm gonna be in Las Vegas this weekend. Woo, gambling! Not really, I'm gonna be at Super Toy Con. I'm gonna be a cosplay judge for the costume contest. I'm gonna have a booth where I'll be hanging out and selling books. I'm also going to be doing a couple of panels and hanging out with you guys. So you, if you live in the area, come on by. Say hi, we'll hang out. That's all for this week, you guys. Thank you again so much for checking out our videos, and I'll see you on the next one.